Hi, I'm Joe Gunther, and welcome to The Day Hiker. Have you ever wondered what exactly it is that makes the Great Smoky Mountains National Park so amazing? Is it the rich history of the generations of people that, that made this place home and built the thriving communities here? What about the incredibly diverse web of life that supports one of the richest and most biodiverse ecosystems in the world? Or what about the geology that makes it so unique? And of course, there's the hundreds of miles of beautiful trails that meander across multiple climates within only a few miles. We want to discuss the communities and lifestyles of the people who lived in places like Cades Cove and Greenbrier, from the Native Americans who populated the area for thousands of years to the loggers who worked and cleared thousands of acres of old growth forest in less than a century. We'll introduce you to wildlife that call the Great Smoky Mountains home and how their symbiotic relationships keep your ecological systems working. We'll meet salamanders, birds, plant life, and even a few bears along the way. Today, we're going to explore the old Sugarlands Trail. It was once part of a thriving community and later home to the Civilian Conservation Corps, also known as the CCC, after the Great Smoky Mountains National Park was established. The CCC was a public works program during the Depression era for young unmarried men in a disciplined environment in camps run by U.S. Army officers. These young men made $30 a month, of which $25 was required to be sent back to their family. Over 3 million young men throughout the country participated in the program during its nine years of existence. Great Smoky Mountains National Park had 22 operational CCC camps from 1933 until the beginning of World War II. And along Old Sugarlands Trail was a home to Camp MP2 and MP10. Our hike will take us to the Old Sugarlands Cemetery instead of the full hike to Cherokee Orchard Road, totaling about uh, four miles round trip with little elevation gains. This is a great hike for families with younger children or a, a nice hike if the roads are closed for inclement weather since the trailhead is before the gates that close the main roads in the National Park. The trailhead to Old Sugarlands Trail is almost across from the park headquarters. There's room for about four vehicles to parallel park, but if it's full, you can park at the Sugarlands Visitor Center and walk across the road. Are you ready? Let's go explore. Immediately after stepping on the old Sugarlands Trail, there's a little side trail down by the river here where you can see the stonework of the bridge built by the Civilian Conservation Corps. And the old camp remnants are only 1.5 miles from the trailhead. The old Sugarlands community was mostly just old dirt roads. As soon as you come off the trail about 100 yards, you'll see a 70 foot tall rock wall. This rock wall was actually a quarry used by the state of Tennessee to pave or surface the old roads throughout the mountains. A portion of the trail will parallel the west prong of the Little Pigeon River. And this is a great place to sit, take a water break, have a snack, or just to sit here and just soak in the scenery. This trail was once Tennessee Highway 71 that ran through the, the old Sugarlands community. It was full of farms, general stores, a general store with the gas pumps, and even a hotel for the growing tourist trade that was coming into the area. At 1.4 miles, look for this trail intersection sign, and then look into the woods, and you'll notice the clock tower from the OCCC camp. We're at the uh, CCC camp clock tower, this is really kind of a seasonal area. In the winter months when all the foliage and grass is down, you can kind of explore the area. But during the summer months when all of the, uh, everything's grown up, you gotta be careful because there are plenty of uh, snakes and, and pl itchy plants and stuff to walk through here. And also remember, as you walk through this area, if you find anything on the ground, old bottles or plates and stuff like that, those aren't souvenirs. Please leave everything in its place for everybody else to enjoy as they walk through this area. And just down from the clock tower, you'll find this ring where the flagpole was located, where a lot of young men would have stood and saluted the flag as it raised each morning. And where we're standing now also, you can see behind me where part of the wildfires of 2016 came through the area. And just in front of me, this area was missed. But it's all coming up green and beautiful, and the Smokies are alive and well. And just down from the clock tower, if you look over to your left, you'll notice a perfect row of hemlock trees along the trail. These were planted by the uh, members of the CCC. At 1.5 miles down the trail, we'll come to this trail intersection. The road to the right is actually the service road for the Old Sugarland Cemetery, which is going to be our final destination on our hike today. But first, let me show you a little secret. From the trail sign, take 40 steps, left foot, right foot, and you'll see a little path to these two dual chimneys that were part of the old CCC camp. 
you'll find old pieces of plumbing, pieces of plates, and old cans and bottles. And once again, remember, these are not souvenirs. Leave everything you found for the next person to come by and enjoy. Well, welcome to the old Sugarland Cemetery. It's a pretty large cemetery, not the largest in the National Park, but one of the bigger ones. And it's full of the same last names from the families that lived in this area. Uh, but there is one grave here of a last name that's not common in the rest of the cemetery, and that's the name of a young 12-year-old boy named Ed McKinley. And the story goes like this. Ed was uh, beaten by his father. Uh, they lived in, in Blount County, which is an adjacent county to Sevier County where Gatlinburg is located. And he ran away from home. And he tried to, to go up and over the mountains over to North Carolina where his grandparents lived. Well, it was late in the season in March and uh, spring hadn't quite got to the top of the mountains. And he wound up in a big uh, snowstorm. And he took refuge under a overhanging rock and that's where he uh, he had frozen to death. A couple days later a couple hunters found him, brought him back to the Sugarlands and then they they hoped that somebody would come forward and and identify the body of this 12 year old boy. Well no one came forward so the community came together and got a pine box and and put a fresh pair of coveralls on the young boy and a, a, a nicely pressed shirt and at the time, it was the most decorated site in the old Sugarland Cemetery, uh, with all kinds of flowers from the community. And this was the unmarked grave of young Ed. In 1975, uh, a lady named Verdi Smith walked into the Sugarlands Visitor Center and inquired if anybody had ever heard of a young boy, a 12-year-old boy that was lost in 1915. Well, it just so happened that Glenn Caldwell, who was a park ranger at the time, he actually knew of the story. So he called uh, Lucinda Ogle and put Virgie Smith in contact with her and they got on the phone and that the, the story was that the young boy was brought here and buried and no one had claimed him. She wasn't quite sure if, you know, if this was her, her brother. So Lucinda called up Ernest Ogle, who was 10 years old at the time, and he actually helped dig this particular grave and he remembers that young Ed had red hair and that's what clinched it for Virgie Smith. She knew that that was her young 12 year old brother that froze to death on his way to North Carolina to his grandparents house. So in 1975 a 200 pound marble slab headstone was brought here with Ed's name on it. Ed McKinley born March 10th 1903 died April 2nd 1915. So for 60 years he laid is the unknown 12-year-old red-headed boy buried in the Sugarland Cemetery. Welcome back and thanks for exploring with us today. If you enjoyed our show and want to see more, please feel free to like and subscribe. If you have any questions or would like to suggest future trails to explore with us, let us know in the comments below. I'm Joe Gunther and as always, don't hit the trails unprepared.